Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and in this video we're going to compare the iPhone 4 with the brand new Samsung Galaxy S2. Let's get to it. Okay, so lots to talk about here. Let's start off with pricing. The iPhone 4 is available in two configurations. The 16 gigabyte model is 200 bucks, and the 32 gigabyte model is 300 bucks. Now, the Galaxy S2 is much more expensive because it's sold unlocked right now. Uh, it's not tied to carriers around the world, and when it is tied, it'll be offered at a lower price. It also has two capacities. The 16 gigabyte version is about 700 bucks right now. Very expensive, obviously. The 32 gigabyte version is not yet shipping. That's going to be even more expensive. Although with the Galaxy S2, you get expandable memory. You don't get that on the iPhone 4, so you probably don't want to opt for the higher capacity version because the price difference is probably more than buying a micro SD card to expand the, the capacity of the Samsung Galaxy S2. So in terms of pricing, the iPhone 4 is definitely lower right now, but we'll have to see how the Galaxy S2 gets priced once it's available on different carriers. Now let's talk about build quality and hardware. Uh, both devices have a home button right in the front, a real hardware home button, which is nice to have. In terms of screen size, we've got a 3.5 inch uh, retina display, which means it's 960 by 640. The PPI of that is 326, and we'll come back to PPI in a sec. The Samsung Galaxy S2 has a 4.3 inch screen, much larger. The resolution is lower though, WVGA 800 down by 480 across. The PPI here is 217. What PPI means is that if you take a square inch on both screens and you count all the pixels inside, the PPI will tell you how many pixels you will count. 326 on the iPhone 4, 217 on the Samsung Galaxy S2, meaning that there are more pixels in a given area on the iPhone 4, text will be sharper, images will be crisper. Although the Galaxy S2 is no slouch when it comes to image fidelity, it's got the Super AMOLED Plus panel which has incredible contrast. Color naturalness, if that's a word, is a little bit less on the, on the Galaxy S2 as we're going to see. We'll compare some photos side by side. Uh, and, and viewing angle is also not as good as it is on the iPhone 4. But both of these have tremendously uh, high quality screens. So that's not really something that you have to worry about. Uh, they've both got, both got front facing cameras, 1.3 megapixels on the iPhone 4 and 2 megapixels on the Samsung Galaxy S2. Uh, so, so you have the video chat option on both with high quality imaging. In terms of build quality and materials used, the iPhone 4 is glass and metal. That's really it. Glass on the front, glass on the back, metal on the sides. The Galaxy S2 has a lot of plastic, but in hand it feels very high quality. We've got glass on the front, plastic on the back, uh, but again, that really doesn't impact build quality. It's very rigid, it feels good in the hand, you can't twist it even though there's a lot of plastic used. And it's a lot lighter than the iPhone 4 too, which is nice, but it's also, as you can see here, bigger. So it's going to be bigger in the pocket uh, if that's a consideration for you. Turning over to the back, we've got cameras here. So we've got a 5 megapixel camera with a flash on the iPhone 4 and an 8 megapixel camera on the back of the Galaxy S2 with a flash as well. 720p video capture here, 1080p video capture on the Galaxy S2. Both of these devices take awesome photos and video. Uh, the iPhone 4 used to have the best imaging when it came to a smartphone. The Galaxy S really rivals that. You can see the sample images we posted in the pocketnow.com review. We'll put up a link in the description if you want to jump back to that. And obviously, no removable backing here on the iPhone 4, but you can remove the back on the Galaxy S2. You can access the battery, you can uh, put in your SIM card, you can add a micro SD card if that's what you want to do. Uh, we've got a single speaker here, we've got a single speaker here. Both of these have about the same volume when it comes to speakerphone and external sounds. They both have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, as you can see there. And we'll turn back onto the front. Now, in terms of other specs, we've got the A4 chip inside of the uh, iPhone 4, which clocks in at about 1 gigahertz with 512 megabytes of RAM. Samsung's latest and greatest has much higher specs than that. It's got a 1.2 gigahertz dual-core Exynos processor, probably similar to what we're going to see in the iPhone 5, maybe clocking in a little bit lower. We've got a full gigabyte of RAM uh, here on the Samsung Galaxy S2, and it really shows in terms of browsing performance and day-to-day -day usability. And we're going to compare definitely some speed aspects of both of these devices to see which one is faster. So both of these devices have incredibly 
Now, both of these devices obviously have different interfaces. They both need you to slide to unlock. And, and we're talking about the difference between Android and iOS. And the differences are huge, and you know a lot of them. In Android, of course, you can have multiple panels. We've got only one setup with configurable, resizable widgets. And so here's an example of just one panel I have. I can take this widget. I can resize it. So you're getting a lot more versatility on the Galaxy S2 or in Android in general. Uh, the iPhone 4, of course, is just icon after icon. There's no app tray. Although, interestingly, the app tray on the Galaxy S2 is kind of modeled off of the iPhone's uh, home screens here. So if you move an icon, you can't arrange it anywhere. Uh, if we actually go back, we'll go back here and we'll hit the edit button. So when you move around icons, they kind of all migrate towards the upper left corner like you get on the iPhone 4. Uh, so we can't put an icon down here. It's going to jump back over there. That's the same situation here on uh, the Samsung Galaxy S2. It just jumps right back into its own configuration. Just like on the iPhone 4, we can have folders uh, in the Samsung Galaxy S2. This is thanks to the TouchWiz interface. We can drop a variety of icons down here. We can take a folder, put it up there, add a folder name. So this is kind of Android turned a little bit iOS-y uh, on the Samsung Galaxy S2. We can hit the Save button. And now we've got a folder. And then if we go over to uh, the folder here, we get a sort of pop down. We've got a pop up here on the Samsung Galaxy S2 looking at the folders inside of the, uh, inside of the, the program list. In terms of data speeds, on the iPhone 4, you'll get speeds of, well, let's actually look at some results that we've had over cellular data. So we have to look for this icon. On average, you're going to get about 2 megabits per second down, of course, depending on where you live and sort of the speeds that you can experience. Um, 2 megabits per second down, and sometimes you get as high as 4, and about 1.5 megabits per second up over HSDPA. Although these results aren't complete, uh, I've gotten speeds of up to 6 megabits per second down on the Galaxy S2 because it's HSPA+. Plus compatible on AT&T. Now, the iPhone 5 is likely to have HSPA+, Plus, so you can reach those higher data speeds. But right now, uh, the Samsung Galaxy S2 is the phone to get if you want the fastest data speeds possible. OK, let's talk about the all-important web browser speed comparison test. So we're going to open up Google on both. And we've got it over there. So we'll go to Google. And we'll load it here. Now, right away, you can tell the difference between these two screens. We're going to take a look at an image in a second. Uh, so let's look at just this white screen. The white is whiter here on uh, the Samsung Galaxy S2. It's got kind of a almost a milky covering to it on the iPhone 4. Let's take a look at screen viewing angles. And so we're on automatic screen brightness here. You might see it change. So we're going to turn to the side. And you can kind of get a sense for how that looks. So now it's starting to disappear. But that's pretty good. On the iPhone 4, it's even better. You can still see it. You can still see it. And we're almost all the way at 90 degrees. It's pretty amazing the viewing angle of the IPS display on the iPhone 4. But definitely, the Galaxy S2 is no slouch when it comes to screen visibility. So we're going to jump to Im images. We are going to, hey, we've got the same pictures here. We'll pick, click on this guy right here. And I don't know who this guy is, but take a look at how his face looks. We'll click View Full Size on both. And you can kind of get a sense. Uh, colors look a little bit more natural on the iPhone 4, although the contrast is incredible on the Galaxy S2. We've got both, again, turn to automatic screen brightness just to keep it fair. Uh, but in terms of image quality, it depends on who you ask. I think. The Galaxy S2 looks better, but some people would come in here and say uh, that the colors are more natural on the iPhone 4. Let's look at another picture. Let's type uh, rainforest in here and see what we can get. Just click rainforest. Click the X. OK. OK, and here we go. We're going to just tap on the first image that we come across. And again, the colors look different. and. Uh, the contrast is definitely noticeably different as well. So we've got very sharp, harsh greens here on the left. And they're a little bit more natural with the iPhone. But then again, if you look at the blacks, the rocks, they are just really sharply black. So again, whether you like color accuracy or contrast, that's a matter of personal opinion. Uh, but the iPhone 4 and the Galaxy S2 certainly excel in different ways. Let's go into another website. Let's go to pocketnow.com, see which loads faster. We're actually just going to go straight to m.pocketnow.com. 
Okay, so we've loaded the mobile sites here. Let's go to the bottom. We're going to click desktop version and see which comes up quicker. Both over the same Wi-Fi network. And as it's loading, I want to scroll down. We got a little bit of a hesitation there. The Galaxy S2 finished. And while it was loading, I could actually scroll down the page. Still going here on the iPhone 4. And it's going to finish up momentarily. Now, what's interesting to note and what's kind of nice to note is that the Galaxy S2 has no bottom bar. So you get really the full screen web experience if you ignore the notification bar at the top. On the iPhone 4, you're going to see the address bar will disappear. Let's force it to go away uh, once you scroll down. Uh, but you don't get that really full screen maximum view. Uh, we can double tap to zoom in, certainly, or sort of pinch to zoom. And both will resize the column. Let's actually check out text. We're going to have to find the same place, so we. OK, so we've got the text about the same size. And if I bring this phone in close on the screen, you're going to see how crisp and clear it is on the iPhone because we've got a higher PPI. It looks like print on a paper. On the Galaxy S2, it's still really darn clear. Uh, but if you look very, very closely, you'll see pixels. And it's not that bad. It's not that noticeable. We're only comparing these phones side to side. And that's probably why we're being ultra picky about uh, PPI. Now let's swipe to the right and see which page loads faster when we try to get these headlines in. All right, the Galaxy S2 is finished, and the iPhone 4 is still loading. Let's talk about tab management. Uh, on the iPhone 4, you press this button in the right bottom right corner. Tab management is something that phones haven't really gotten right yet. They haven't been able to recreate the desktop experience. Thankfully, third-party browsers exist, like Dolphin HD, that put the tabs on the top. Here on the Galaxy S2, it's kind of a difficult gesture to get, but you pinch like this and you brought out into the tab view. You can click new page or new window and boom you have a new window to work with. Then you can zoom out. Again that takes a little bit of practice. You can swipe side by side. They look almost the same, right? They've got the dots on the bottom. They've got the previews going side by side and it will show you a little preview of what is inside the window. So pretty good tab management for both. So let's jump into another more complex website. We'll go to Engadget.com. It's got the really long page. There you go. They're both going to load the mobile version. The Galaxy S2 was first with that. We can scroll down, take a look at the various elements, and go all the way down to the bottom. The Galaxy S2 is as faster scrolling than the iPhone, but that may or may not be good for you. You might want to take your time with scrolling a little bit. And uh, this is the mobile site, so you can't actually pinch to zoom. Let's try to get these at the same time. Perfect. And they're loading the mobile versions. I'm going to move around on the page while they load. Big difference here. Uh, the Galaxy S2 already finished. End of the day, the Galaxy S2 really has fantastic web browsing performance that beats even the king, the iPhone 4, in terms of web browsing speed. The iPhone 5 will probably come in and destroy everyone once again, but right now, the Galaxy S2 trumps uh, the iPhone 4 in terms of rendering speed and smoothness of scrolling, uh, and even things like scrolling down the page when pages are loading and not getting checkerboards. So very impressive. Samsung Galaxy S2 definitely wins when it comes to web browsing speed and capability. So your choice between the Galaxy S2 and the iPhone 4 is really going to come down to personal preference. If you are in the market for the first time for a smartphone and you want to figure out which operating system you want to spend time with, because let's face it, once you've used Android for a while or iOS or Windows Phone 7, you've bought the apps, you've spent the time to customize. It's really a, a big time commitment. Uh, Depending on, on where you are in the buying process, the Galaxy S2 is not only a great starter smartphone, but it's a great smartphone that you know is going to be high-end for, for a couple of years to come. Yeah, it doesn't have the higher screen resolution, the build quality isn't as high as the iPhone 4, but it is fast, it is thin, uh, it's just a little bit too expensive right now. So if you can wait a little bit, uh, wait until the Galaxy S2 is available on other carriers, but to be honest, if you wait to that point, the iPhone 5 might be out, and that might blow the Galaxy S2 out of the water. So it really comes down to personal preference, how long you want to wait, how long you want to spend. Both of these devices are awesome, but it's 
especially impressive what Samsung has been able to do with the Galaxy S2 and making a true contender to the best smartphones that are out there because this is probably the best smartphone uh, that is out there right now, at least in our opinion. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And again, if you want to see the full review, we've already posted it on Pocket Now. It's got a lot of information about the Galaxy S2. Be sure to check that out if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and that's it for now.